Hi, this is John from Sonic Drive Studio. Thanks for tuning into this channel. I recently released a video in which I demonstrate the Fractal Audio XFX and AX8 in multiple styles. This includes tones ranging from pristine cleans to heavy downtune metal. I've put a link to that video in the description below and I recommend watching that before you view this video. I'll be doing more of these videos for different platforms such as Helix Native, The Kemper, etc. So please subscribe if you want to see more. This third episode will focus on the fourth and fifth tones of this video, which were the heavy rock tones and the solo guitar tones. Some of the settings of these presets, such as the noise gate and room reverb, have already been discussed in the previous episodes, so I recommend also watching those. The first tone that we're going to discuss here is the heavy rock tone. I use my ESP LTD Iron Cross James Hetfield signature guitar with EMG headset pickups. These pickups sound similar to the regular classic 8160 EMG set, but with more dynamic range and a tone that leans a bit more to the passive side. I was going for a big and modern fuzzy tone reminding me of bands such as Nickelback, Incubus and Limbiscuit. Mesa Boogie rectifiers were used for many similar tones, so I went with the Recto 1 Red Amp model, which is my favorite Recto model in the XFX. Input drive is set to 6.2, but it varies per guitar and player, so try to find the sweet spot that works for your playing and guitar here. I lowered the bass to 3.5 to reduce the woofiness and muddiness of this amp. You can even turn it down more or enable the cut switch in order to get an even tighter sound. Many guitar players like to use tube screamers in front of recto amps, but for six string tones I never do that to retain the compressed and fuzzy character of these amps. It just sounds looser and bigger this way, which I like. Mids and treble are turned up a bit to also increase mid-range definition and clarity. Presence remains at 5. Now I've lowered the master volume a little bit from the default setting because when set higher it tends to sound a little too driven or compressed. Turning this control down a bit gives the amp more open sound with more dynamics and less congested mids. The reverb is set to similar values as in the previous video. Only now the mix is set to 11.6. Now let's check out the post-processing in Cubase. First I've enabled the EOSIS Air EQ on this track, which is a wonderful and natural sounding equalizer. In this instance I'm only using it to slightly reduce the low end responses of the resonant peaks. Those resonant peaks can happen when palm muting lower notes with higher gain tones, and in the mix they can get in the way of the bass guitar and or kick drum. Next up is the Slate Virtual Mix Rack in which I'm using this SSL EQ emulation for cutting some tubby mid lows at around 230 Hz, and also filtering out all the lows under 95 Hz. The FGN EQ was used as more of a subtle but very effective coloring EQ, boosting a bit of 500 Hz and 1.5K to get the mid-range to be more present and fuller in the mix. Then I'm using a compressor with very fast attack and release settings to slightly even out the dynamics a bit, adding some warm compression. The final processor in this chain is the Waves F6 Dynamic Equalizer plugin, which can be used to remove unwanted frequencies in a dynamic and more musical way than normal EQs would. Each band basically has its own compressor. In this instance, I'm using it to tame the low end's resonant peaks even more, leaving more room for the bass guitar in that area. Similar results can be achieved with multiband compressors. So I'm basically using this band as a compressor to only affect this area. So when I'm playing a low palm muted note, there tends to be a resonant peak here, and when that note is played, the compressor is triggered, causing it to duck down a little bit. Moving on to the solo guitar tone. I'm using my PRS Torero guitar with EMG pickups. It has a neck through body and a Floyd Rose. I was aiming for a full, warm and saturated solo sound here. For this tone, I ended up using the Corn Cob M50 amp, because it has nice distortion characteristics as well as a nice EQ curve. I raised the input drive and overdrive to get more sustaining gain. Bass is turned down quite a bit and I also enabled the cut switch here to remove more low end and make this sound a little tighter. Treble was raised a little bit to increase clarity and presence. And the presence itself is set to 3.17. Depth was set to 4.10 for that nice low end thump. The cut and bass controls in this instance are used more for shaping the guitar and distortion characteristics, but the depth control affects the overall EQ curve more. The bright switch is also enabled to give the guitar a bit more definition as explained in an earlier video. I'm using the Ohnhammer Bogner Oversized 2x12 with the M25 speaker option again for that nice mid-range character and that 3D sound which I like. The lows have been cut at 63 Hz, 
and I've also added a little bit of motor drive. And this time I've also enabled the preamp, which is set to modern for a very subtle enhancement of the tone. Raising the drive and saturation helps out to even the dynamics a little bit and warming things up in a pleasant way. The reverb block has the same settings as before with the mix control set to 10. In the DAW, we're starting off with these two EQs again. To first remove some low end at about 100 Hz and also to add some warm mids again with FGN as before. Instead of using a delay in the XFX, I chose to use the repeater delay by Slate and D16. It's one of the best delays I've ever used because of the functionality and the way it sits in the mix. I'm using the spread B option here for more stereo width. Then I'm ending the chain with Verb Suite Classics by Slate and Liquid Sonics. It's a wonderful reverb plugin and I recommend checking this out as well. I'm using the default settings, which is the FG480 unit with the A-plate reverb and the dry wet control is set to 17%. This reverb is amazing, check it out. Okay, that's it for now. Stay tuned to this channel for more episodes which are coming very soon and if you haven't already, please hit subscribe and follow us on facebook.com/sonicdrivestudio. Thanks for watching.